بدأنا بدأنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. We get ready to start إن شاء الله تعالى with the workshop. The Janaza workshop and the workshop is majority or the workshop is more practical than book work. You're not reading through a book as if we were in a class on a Monday, Wednesday, like we do throughout the week. The workshop is going to be hands-on, what's supposed to be done. We try to get some books just to, for people to take, but they didn't have enough. So, inshallah, it's going to be simple, direct, to the point that nobody here uh, should take lightly. And a set of law, the brother is known as set of law, as of the law. He does this work every day. If brothers don't know, if sisters don't know, when people die, when the Muslims in the city die, they only call a couple of people. They only call a couple people. They only call a couple brothers and said they'd hold Janazah. He's one of them. And Allah protect them. I mean, I hope everybody understands this. Sisters. Sisters, when people die in this city, they only call a few people to do the janazah. He's one of them. So what he's getting ready to present to us is what happens, and we all know what's going on as far as the murder and death in the city. He does with this every day. And he can tell you how many janazahs he does a day, and all the details, all the things that are not really clear, is getting ready to be clear. Do not read through a book like we do in a regular class. It's a workshop, it's gonna be hands on, and that's what all of this is for. So we encourage people to pay attention, uh, get your questions ready, make sure it's clear, and understand that everybody in here need to understand. This is, uh, as we say, this is practice for something that's real. None of us are excused from this. And what we're ready to see is what possibly we're gonna be doing to each other one day. None of us are uh, excuse from being on the table as they said inshallah so hopefully everybody's paying attention and ready because it's not if you want to jot it down jot it down but pay attention we had a situation not too long ago especially for the sisters sisters need to know how to wash sisters the sisters need to know how to wash another woman it's possible somebody close to you died. What if they put in their will that they want you to wash them? Brothers, brother put in his will, he wants you to wash him. Right? He requests that you come and wash his body. That's what he wants to wash him. So we need to be attentive and make sure we're paying attention because, again, this is practice, but it's practice for something that's real in our deen, inshallah. <laughs> As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah al-mubad. To begin, um, we felt, we felt as though this master, the IMFC, that you know what I'm saying, was incumbent upon us to bring forth this to the Muslims. Being though, we go through these same daily things over and over again, and I'm on the brother at the, at the end of it, seeing at the funeral home, you know, what transpires. And a lot of times, a lot of people was ignorant to the fact of washing because they believe that death isn't going to strike them or they're going to strike their family members. And a lot of times when death do strikes, a person goes into panic mode automatically. They really don't know what to do, you know what I'm saying? That's when you go to somebody who knows. And the majority of the time, they'll come to either us at, you know, Khadija's funeral home, that's where I work at, I'm doing that. And, you know, may Allah preserve it, I mean. And it was, it was mind-boggling to me to even work there, being as though it took a woman to open up a Muslim funeral home that we got uh, like 100,000 Muslims here. So it, got, it says a lot about it, you know, the sister. You know what I'm saying? She took it upon herself, the, a dying need that we needed, and, you know, she addressed it. So um, I just wanted to, you know, start a little bit brief because I go all the way back into the hospital setting. Being as though when your family member is on hospice, they're the last stage, they have brothers like us to go visit them. And we go visit them and we try to remind them of Allah. 
And Chad tell them and say, La ilaha illallah, you know, you have good thoughts, read Quran to him. And this is one of the rights of a Muslim. Visit your brother when he's sick. If you know him, you know him not. Visit the sister, if you know him, you know him not. For the sisters. And um, all the way until we have to, I want to say this first and foremost. We really have to get our affairs in order. Before we even explain the janaza, you have to have it a will, a lot, a lot of will that says what you want done to your body. Because the majority of us is converts. You know, we came from whatever background to Islam. Our family members really don't probably even you know acknowledge us as being Muslim. And majority of the times when you pass away, your family will fight for you to, to have a Christian service or whatever that you know they follow. And that's always a dilemma, first and foremost. So hopefully from this class, I want y'all to take serious when y'all walk out these doors that you understand you have to have a living will. If you're, if you're not married, then your mother, if she's not Muslim, you need her to sign a document and get it notarized that she says, you can do such and such, such and such. Because the next of kin, if you're not married, is your mother. And we see it a thousand times that mom ain't going for it. She want to do what she want to do. And we have Muslims who is not connected to the community and nobody knows you. So what happens is you're being buried other than being a Muslim. And it's serious. So first and foremost, we need to address that issue. Moving right along, the janaza for me, I used to do all the janaza workshops. And I just had a thing, my wife was in the audience. I used to always go to all the classes. Because I already know what's going to happen in this life. I always want to know what's going to happen in the next life. And I always wanted to help somebody who was, that they can't help themselves. And that's when the brother who is deceased comes in, in effect. He's laying on the table. His soul has been extracted. His soul is lower, but the shell of him is here. And his rights have to be performed upon him. And the reward that I heard that you could get for watching a Muslim just blew my mind. It just blew my mind. And that was the thing. Like I could get 40 major sins forgiven. Another one said you come out like a newborn baby. And from a person who's trying to see Toba, trying to you know, be forgiven, this is an opportunity that you could do for sins to be removed. But you can't reveal what the brother looks like, the sister looks like, the smell of her, none of that. That's the opinion on the law. And that was like one of the things. So I used to always attend different classes, and a brother came to me and said, oh, you always in these classes. I'm like, what are we right now doing? I just came from janazi class. What are you doing? You're in the janazi class. And he said, yo, I know somebody that owns a funeral home. So being in a classroom setting wasn't the same experience I had in a real setting with a live body in front of me. And I just want to tell you a story real fast. And, and this is why it says, it blew my mind. I was, I, I was going, at, I started working there and I started going, doing the month of Ramadan, I used to go to go pray at the, the masjid, go pray. And I met this brother. I mean, what I'm all about, man. Abdul Haq, real, real pleasant brother. And I met him in the masjid. And out of 30 days or 29 days, I prayed with him about 21 days. Every day, I prayed next to him. And one day I was with the brother at the law, and he said, yo, we got a body pickup. This is my first time I ever had to go pick up a body. You have to go to the medical examiner. That, the, the things that you hear in the news, we have to go get the body, and however the body is at the crime scene, after the autopsy, we have to deal with that. And I went to go get him, and I, we were running back, and he said, yo, open up the bag. And he said, the first thing you do, because he's teaching me, you have to cover his outer. And we covered his outer, put the bag over it, and when I zipped it, it was the brother, it was him laying on the table, riddled with bullets. Blew my mind. Like it really crushed me. A brother that I only met in the last year, every day he said, water for me in the deep. Never knew him from a can of paint. But it was just a connection with him. And I would have never thought in a million years that me starting a job at the funeral home, I would have had to wash his body. It was his mind blowing. And I didn't come out the same person that day. It just changed me completely. Like I really had to go home, sit down, and really readjust and wind down because it got real for me. Because sometimes you hear about death and it don't touch you, it really don't affect you. But when you know somebody or you know grow to love somebody, you about to slam or something and it touches you, it hits you a little bit different. 
So I really want blank. And this is the reason for the class. A lot of times when death strike, our faculties are all in. So the Janazza, I felt that it was a necessity to the Muslims to, to know what needs to go on. Because time in and time in, you know, we do prayers, even from the prayer to the washing, nobody really know what they're doing. Nobody know what they're doing. Because you have different situations for different people. When a person is post-mortem, meaning that he has an autopsy on him, then it's, it's, it's some type of requirements need to be done to type, on top of this person, meaning you know, he can get washed. Opposed to somebody dying from a natural cause, dying in his sleep. Or something like that. So I think that, that that was basically everything in a nutshell in the beginning. So um, I know I do this, like the brother said, I do this every day, but one thing I always, you know, vow to myself, this is the oath I made with Allah, that, that I will never become desensitized from it. That I just don't look like this is a job and a picture, because it's really not. Because, you know what I mean, I'm going to Allah gave me a halal living and, and a job, but the reward, the reward ain't really with, with the person. The reward is with Allah that I see. So when I see a brother on top of the table, it always reminds me I could be here. I could be here at any moment. And I'm, sometimes I'm in there more two to three hours trying to sew a person back together. Nobody around me, no friends or nothing. All you have is contemplation and ponder over you seeing how great Allah is. This person you saw laughing, smiling, he had nice oils on, whatever, and then you see him cold, laid on the table, and he's not there. It's not him. And you have to sit there pondering over that. Death has never been a game to me. That was the reason I needed something. I needed something coming from the streets. I came from the streets at the time. I, I always asked the law, my wife's the widow, asked the law to give me something to keep me, to be reminded of him. And Allah gave me, alhamdulillah, he gave me a mind-blowing job. It's like, like it's like, it's a job that I just saw many people come in where I worked at and never made it. They'll leave out. Because it's real. You have to have a strong stomach, they say. But I don't believe that. You have to have the power that Allah gives you to do the job. A strong stomach don't, don't cut it. Because when a person is desensitized, he, he don't care about who's laying on the table, that to him, this is just a body. But to, as a Muslim, you know, this is your Muslim brother, and he has rights upon him, and you need to perform a correct um, um, I'm going to be This is a serious thing, because um, it's more than just a job. You know what I'm saying? It's a right that my brothers have, and I really you know, try to fulfill all the rights I have with the people. But I just want to bring this highlight right here. From the age of 11 to 16, we have a suicide rate. 11 to 16, we have a suicide rate right now. A plague in the city. From the age 16 to, I say, 31, homicide. Homicide. Then you have the age from like 35 to like 60 something, overdose. Muslims. When we actually took the statistic in the funeral home, how many gymnasies that we did, what was homicides, suicide was at the top. Suicide was, was leading the way. And it's mind-boggling because we have Muslims that really have, uh, they have uh, mental issues. And nobody touches on the mental illness that people deal with. Sometimes when a person goes to you, always hear, you hear the story inside there. Or oh, the person talked to me, but I was at work when he called me, wanted to talk about something. You know what I mean? The inevitable happens. Allah called me back whatever, whatever way that he, he went out. And it's, sometimes we have to lend that ear. Sometimes a person be having a cry and we don't understand it. We think he, you know, he was, he's bugging me. Or she's bugging me. But don't understand that this person is really crying for help. But sometimes we so turn off to somebody blowing up. Oh, they, they, might, they might want something. Sometimes a person wants something more than a financial gain from you. So um, I say that to say that being in a funeral home, understanding what are we going through, and what our communities is being plagued with, it's a need for this class right here. 
And we decided to bring this to the people to actually show the people what is the reality. What is the reality after death? Everybody knows is there's, there's not a person that walks this earth can argue about death. Everybody's on the same playing field. Everybody knows death comes unexpectedly. We all know that death has no gender, it has no color, it has no age. We can all agree to it. But what we go come here today is show y'all what is the rights and how we go, the protocol, how we go about washing a Muslim and giving his rights, preparing him to be in the grave to be questioned. Because while his body is put in the grave, his soul will be joined back to him. And he'll be questioned from the Malaika. Um, so we got Okay, the first demonstration, inshallah, and it depends upon the uh, the condition of the, of the of the Muslim. You know, the time of how is death? You know. So we don't have brother Ashir. He's going to be uh, he's going to demonstrate for us, inshallah. Next step is at all times. Just, just, just to uh, say, hold this mic for me and show you. All right. As I was saying, when we go retrieve the body from the medical examiner or from the, the hospital, they'll put it to a body bag. So at all times, they'll put into a body bag, and after we retrieve the body, we will unzip the bag. But before we unzip the bag, let's just say, you know, use our imagination, Is he, if he's in a body bag, right? We'll take a plastic bag such as this. This is for the men, not for the women. So the woman is covered different, so this is for the men. We'll take this bag right here, and it'll be placed over his arm, right? So it'll cover from his navel to his knees. So, I need, I need four brothers. Everybody gonna jump. <laughs> so, at all time, we always use protective gear and we treat everybody as phase five. The phase five means that a person has a contagious disease such as HIV, AIDS, so everybody's treated like that. So they, you know, man, like you know, we do this. Everybody treated as phase five. So we're gonna put this gown on. So the gown that has a hole, it will go over your head. Then you'll put your arms in and make sure that it goes all the way to secure your thumb. Just for future reference, if you do do a washing, make sure you don't wear a hoodie like the brother right here, because it's what's gonna do it, it's gonna split the back of the neck. So sometimes you know, when you get to moving around, see how it's starting to crack down. So make sure that you try to use less clothes as possible, something like a t-shirt or something like the brother you got a thigh that is thin. You want to tie the tie in the back. So for those who, you know what I'm saying, is a little bit more thin, you'll take it, twist it all the way to the front, and it's tied knot in it. Because they're not coming back off. And these right here are disposable. So after you get done, it's a technique how to take it off. You just can't just rip it off. So, put some gloves on. Some gloves. So, alhamdulillah, may Allah reward the brothers as he 
He's going to help demonstrate this. This is a serious matter. All right. So after he is taken out the body bag, the bag is placed over his album, like I said, from his navel to his knees. At all times, you have to have protective gear on. Treat everybody in phase five, regardless how close that you know. In order to do this, you had to take a, a class, the ocean class, that tells you about blooded body, the diseases in the body, parasites and all that. So you want to be extremely cautious, but you know if you have small children, their immune system is not their immune system is not up to par. So you know what I mean you can you can actually take something home to. So we're gonna put his arms up here. His arms up here. After he's like this, we're gonna have three buttons. The bucket is going to look just like this. The first bucket you won't even play Sidra. It's called the lotus leaf. Crushed up lotus leaf. And what you have to do, you get like a, a wick that you whip eggs with. You can get it and whip it in a bucket until it becomes suds. So you're only using the suds. You ain't using the Sidra. You, only, you ain't going to use the, like, because it's like green. So all you use it is the suds to wash your body. But being as though if you don't have that, you can use any bacteria soap, like body wash, something like that, that can form up nicely. That would be in one bucket. The second bucket we're going to use is going to have straight water in it. Straight water. The third bucket we use is for chemicals. It makes the body stiff. It's an insect repellent, and it keeps the body at a low temperature. It preserves the body, being as though the body is not in bond. So we have to take precautions. And this is one of the, you know, the precautions the Prophet son, he took as preserving the body using cancer. So after all that's done, you put it in there, you have the rag. So for the brother that's actually doing the washing, because it's, it's, it's four brothers, and the reason being, the, the less is better. There, there can be another time that a person needs to come into the room just to observe. You know what I'm saying? They say, this, ain't, this ain't life, it's for a person. So you have to be in here doing something. So we're gonna get, the brother right here, he actually gonna do the washing. I'll put it on your face. So the first thing that we do is move it on one side of the table chip. I do my TV will stand up here. Take this off. Now. We actually gonna grab the brother by his shoulders. Shoulders. And y'all gonna sit him in a sitting position. So you're gonna sit him all the way up in a sitting position, just like that. You're gonna take your right hand and gently rub his stomach. You're going to do that three times, and that's to take any fecal matter or urine out. After that's done, y'all want to place the brothers back down, place it back down gently. Everything you have to do gently. Even though he don't feel nothing, but it's the honor of a Muslim to treat him just like he was alive. So what we're going to do is, the brothers, so it's going to be hard trying to talk with this mic. That's right. I'm going to hold it. Yeah. Because this right here, it, it, it's, it's, it has to be a lot of moving around. It's be a lot of moving around. So after that, the brother's gonna be on this side. So y'all would take his leg, right? Open his leg up, just like that. We're gonna get one of these buckets. They'll be right here, in the middle. Grab me one of them rag shape. So it's gonna be middle, but this is gonna be on the ground. Huh? It's gonna be on no. the, the bottom this, or this the top. This one is actually here. The one that's on the ground will be a bucket like this. At the time, they'll have a hole. They'll have a hole in the table, so when the water runs down, it runs right into the bucket. So it'll be feces in here, blood, whatever comes out, it's gonna come through here. You have to wash them off. So after he does that, shake. You gonna come right here with your left hand. You gonna grab this rag. Do Latif, you gonna come down here. You gonna grab his leg and you gonna lift his leg like this. Right hand. Yup. You gonna take this rag and you gonna clean his private parts. 
And that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go under the bag, keep the bag down at all times. So you're gonna slide under the bag, and you're actually cleaning. That's how you clean it. Then the more that you lift his leg, then you dip the rag again, rinse it out, make sure nothing on it. And how you determine the rag, the clip, how, how, how much stuff he has on him, you're gonna look at the rag. You're not gonna look at his privates. His privates gonna be covered, but you're gonna look at the rag, squeeze it out, clean it, you're gonna go back under. You're gonna clean him again. You're gonna dip the rag one more time. Then you're gonna lift his leg a little bit higher, and you would take this right here and clean his buttocks area. You go get to his buttocks area real good. You'll clean it. You'll put the rag down, back in the bucket. You'll place his leg down. They have different types of techniques. You'll grab that bucket right there. You will pop the holes off or your, the front, and you will put it right under there, and you will clean his private parts. Sometimes it depends on different settings. Different funeral homes have different things. Some have like a, a garden hose, some that you really have to fill up a bucket like this, thing that you water the flowers with, to actually clean the private parts. So you'll take it and you'll put it under the bag, keep them covered at all times, and you just wash them off. You'll wash them off like that. If you could get to a hose, a hose is better. And the same way he'll do, he'll lift his leg up and he'll do the same thing. He'll clean his private part, his penis area first or whatever, and you know, maybe his buttocks area. You have to make sure that there's nothing on it to perceive what's going on. You'll take this, the rag that if it have any feces, you have to discard it. You can't put it in the washing machine or nothing like that. You'll put it in the trash bag. Hopefully it got like one of them hazard red bags. You place everything inside there. Then, you know, at the funeral home, they'll just dispose of it. So you'll put this back on. You'll take this bucket. This will be filled back up right here. And this is the time to make the wudu. The wudu is next. After you clean the private parts, the next step is the wudu. So brother, being though you're doing the washing, you're gonna come around here. Abdul Latif, you're gonna hold this. So what happens is, you will say to yourself, Bismillah. You say the Bismillah, Bismillah. Right? You say it to yourself, you wanna say it out loud, you'll take it. The brother, Abdul Latif, actually is gonna pour the water on his hand. When he pour the water on his hand, he actually gonna clean it in between his fingertips, past his wrist, Jimmy, depending on the person, if he died and he got fingerprinted, then it have to be a different step to take the fingerprint stuff off the ink, then clean his hand. So he'll do this three times. And the reason the bucket like this is better because you're not wasting water. You can actually control how much water that comes out. So it's the first time. He'll do it the second time. And he'll do the same thing. He'll gently massage in between his fingers all the way past his wrist. You do it with the right hand, alhamdulillah. No. So you do it for the third time, just like that. So the brother, you're gonna put his arm down gently after the third one. The brother on this side, you're gonna stay in shape. The brother on this side will grab his arm and gently grab him from his forearm, go to his forearm, to the back of his arm, and you'll gently just hand it across the body and you'll put the whole pour the water on it. Abdul Latif is the water man right now. So you, you want to stay with the water. And you're going to gently wash his hand three times. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Shake your hands and everybody. Just like the brother that's paused for this is what happens in the room. It gets real. So you're gently just massage his fingers. Make sure you go past his wrist. Go past his wrist. Yeah. And do it the second time. And it's the same thing. The gentleness. Yeah. Pour one more time. And it's be the same thing. Go from his wrist in between his fingers. Make sure the, the water actually penetrate his skin. Then he will actually take his hand and gently place it on his side. The second step is that being as though no water can be placed in his mouth or in his nose. So it's two types that you could do it. You could do it with two fingers, or you could do it with a wet cloth. We're going to do it with two fingers, inshallah. So the brother on this side would do, he will hold his mouth and move his lips up with your thumb, just like that. Make sure that his lips is closed, being as though no water could go inside the mouth. And the reason being that, 
when they said that, a person would say, like, why? That don't really make sense. But when you work inside the morgue, when water gets inside the body, the mouth or the nose, it automatically makes a person throw up. Automatically makes a person throw up. So this is the hikmah that the Prophet ﷺ, he used of teaching the people. Later on, we find out why things is in place. So he'll keep his thumb on him. You'll take your, your right two fingers. The brother will put water, like Abdul Latif will put water on your fingers. And you will go across his top lip three times. Just like that. Three times. After he go across his mouth three times, the brother will still keep his mouth closed just in case any water actually goes in his mouth. He will take the same two fingers and he will go to his nasal cavity and wipe down three times. So you're gonna wet your fingers and you're gonna go down three times. You know, right here, she. Right here, down, three times. You wet it. Yep. After that, you will stand at the top of his head. Right. And the reason how I do it like this, because I try to go through the book form every step. Maybe a person want to stand on that side. But how I do it to make it real easy and nobody be bumping into each other, he's still going to hold his mouth with the thumb. Right? <clears throat> the brother going to stand. You can, you can relax your hand down. So you're going to stand over here, Abdul Latif. And what you want to do is you want to actually pour the water on his face. So you'll pour it on his face. Yeah, right on top of his face. Now you will take your hands and you will massage from his hairline all the way down, close to his ears, all the way under his leg, his chin, with the water. Now you'll go right across with your hands. Yep. Just like that. And you'll go all the way down around. That's why the thumb is, is in place. You look it right under. Just like that. After you do it like that, you know you can do it one time, you can do it three times. So you have to make sure that you massage the water into his pores, like the pores. You massage it into his face gently. Sometimes you have a person, they might, they die, they have a different condition, they can have skin slippage. So if you massage it too hard or rub it, his skin could come off. So you have to be real gentle. <laughs> So after that, you would gently let his mouth go. I do not see you would slide back here, and that will you'll, you'll come right here next to his right arm. Now what will be done is, now you would actually pick his arm up like this. So with, with your left hand here, your right hand he's gonna pour on the side, side. right on the side. You're always in the back of him. So you're gonna pour, he can pour from the top of his hand. Look, look right here. You know. Up here, you can take the water here, start from his fingertips, move your hand, both hands, you want to come down, pass his elbow, three times. Fingertips, pass his elbow, gently massaging three times. you do it three times. And then when you do the wudu, there's no, we're not rushing. This is, this is not a marathon. You know what I'm saying? We do everything slow, making sure everything is done. Right. Into each finger. Right. Back of his hand, his palm, his wrist, go straight down his forearm. Pass his elbow three times. You do the same thing, Dow. You'll put his arm down gently. And you'll move, you'll go around the table. And you move on, you'll move on to his left side, his left arm. And it's the same thing. Same thing. So hold this with left hand, right hand. Yeah. Same thing. From the top of his fingers, make sure everything is wet. Everything is wet. <coughs> he 
And just understand that this time when you're doing it, really reflect off the person you're watching. You're actually feeling his, his arm, his flesh, and it'd be ice cold. Ain't like it's somebody that's, you know, their room temperature, the person is ice cold. So, you know what I'm saying? Even through the gloves, you can still feel the coldness. Put his arm down gently. Brother, you gonna slide around this way. Dow, you gonna stand at the top of the head. Now hold this right here. So with you, you're gonna lean over, you're gonna put your hands on his neck. Like this. But you're gonna move down. You're gonna pick his head up like this. His head will be up. Abdul Latif, you on this side. You actually gonna pour the water on his head from his hairline. Right, you'll pour it right here. So you go clean from his hairline to the nape of his neck and back up. So you're gonna do one swipe from the top all the way down and come right back up on top again. Yep. So you pour the water, you'll come down, go all the way down to his hairline, to the nape of his neck, go all the way back up. And his neck will be placed, usually you'll have like a block. So to keep his head a little, you know, a jarred up a little bit. You're gonna put him down, gentlemen. You put him down there. Yep, you put him down. Yep. You're going to take your, your uh, index fingers, will go in his ear. You put your index fingers in his ear, and your thumbs will go behind all the way to the earlobe. All the way to the earlobe. Just like that. After that, we will actually move down to his right foot. So, brother, you're going to come around this way. Dow, you're going down to his feet. You're going to come around this way. Abdul Latif, you're going to stand in the front. You're going to grab him by his calf. You're going to pick him up by his calf muscle. You're going to pick him right up by his calf, not his ankle. Go more down. Yep, just like that. And the reason being is that when he pours the water, you have to clean it between his toes. So what you'll do is you'll take your right pinky and you'll start from the big toe and you'll go all the way down each toe. Then he'll pour the water and you'll clean from your, his ankles all the way down to his feet in between his toes. You'll do that three times. So pour the water on your shoulder lock. Right. Gently. Down, you gonna switch on this side, you gonna grab him by his calf, pick him up from that side. And at all times, his outer, his private parts is covered. It never comes to cover for no reason. So if, if, just in case that the bag slip, depending on how tall the rubber is, you just keep readjusting to make sure he's covered. And I like to do it, I like to go past the ankle. I like to go past the ankle, make sure that the ankle is soaked. There's no dry spots, no ashy marks, or nothing. After that, we actually place him down gently, his foot down gently. Then this is how we begin to wash him. The wudu is already done. Now this is how you begin to wash the naked, the deceased person. You'll take the bucket, when it has the antibacterial soap or it has cider, it has the lotus leaf, the crushed lotus leaf. And now you're gonna come around this way. You're gonna wash him with your right hand. Your left hand will go, your thumb will go under his mouth. His four fingers go with his mouth and nose are covered. Cover, make sure nothing in there. You'll take the rag, you'll dip it, you get a lot of suds, and you gently squeeze it on his face. You squeeze it on his face, then you gently will clean his face and his head area. Depending on the condition of the body, if you wipe, they can get like a brush burn, they turn pink, and like the skin will come off. So depending on the condition of the body, you really have to look at what you're dealing with, and you know how to go about it, you know how to, you know what I mean? 
the sister of the last one, all right? I'll just look at it. All right. So what you can do there is after you do that, you're going to put the, the soap, the rag back inside. What I like to do, I like to just rinse the face off. And it being sometimes a lot of things trigger family members that actually do the wash. If they see soap laying on top of their family member's face, they start panicking. They don't, they don't understand that this person is dead, so they start panicking. So what you want to do to make it gentle as possible, just take some water and just clean his face. Because that's always an issue. He only got soap on his face. And he start panicking. So sometimes you have to you know, assess the thing and say, okay, let's do it like this. So what I do is I just clean the soap off his face. After you clean the soap off his face, we're actually going to start clean. You're going to dip the rag again down. Dip it real good. And say if it's if it's cigarette or is the antibacterial soap, he would actually open the rag like this. Like you want to use the whole rag. No time that your hand touches his products. It's always covered at all times. So he'll grab it like this, he'll grab the suds, he'll bring it up, and he'll start from his neck. You want to start from his neck. You'll clean from his neck, his shoulder. You want to clean his bicep and his tricep, right? So what you want to do, right? You want to do it like this. Left hand, right? Grab it. It's like that, yeah. So when you need, you want to clean it. You want to hit his bicep. You want to hit his forearm. You want to hit his hand in between his finger and his palm. Let's come right this the brother will actually grab it with the right hand, grab his wrist, open his arm up. You will take your right hand, you will clean his underarm, and you'll clean his chest all down. His right side, his whole ribs, and everything. Now, from the navel up is you clean with the right hand. From the navel to the knees is still your outright, you have to clean it with the left hand. So what you do is you switch it, dip it, being as though you already clean, already his, his front and his back already, you have to clean his hip. So you'll clean from his hip, you'll go under, you'll clean his hip, all the way down to his knee, you'll wash it real good. Keep him, make sure the bag is down at all times. It's the most important thing, make sure your brother or the sister's private parts is covered at all times, right? You're going to come out from there. You're going to dip the rag. You're going to go back to the right hand. You're going to put his arm down gently. You're going to stand over here, Dao. You're going to clean from his knee all the way down to his feet, in between his toes, the sole of his feet, and behind the ankles. Hit his knee. And when you hit his knee, you know it's still covered, you're going to go under the bag. Now, you can watch what I actually see what you're doing. You go all the way down, and you'll clean his feet. You go even between each toe, you'll hit the sole of his feet and behind his ankles. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to put the rag back inside. So this is how we do this. We're going to move this bucket. So that way actually is going to hold this bucket. Y'all three brothers gonna be on that side of the table. Now we'll be on this side. So this is how we do this. Can I hold this for me, please? So this is how we do this. So y'all actually cross his legs. So this leg will go on top of this leg, right? So you put your left hand here, your right hand be on his knee. You always want to step into the table, being as though it's soap on the body, it can hit the metal table and slide right down. So you always want to be up on the table. Now, do not teeth, you want to put both hands across his head. Brother, what you want to do is you want to lock your left hand on his wrist. Mm -hmm. Over, 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 over on top of his wrist. And your right hand will be on his shoulder. So what happens is, like how I actually rotate the body, I do it being as though when a person is still soapy on them, because the soap is still on them, 
they can actually slip and fall. So you try to secure the best as possible. We had this long trash bag, so when he actually turned over, this is proper parts is out in the back, it's still covered. So we actually gonna turn him over. So Dow, you gonna slide around here, bro. We gonna turn him over, turn him all the way over to you till he's on the side. This is still covering his outer. You gonna take the rag, you gonna dip it. You can actually look at the back while you're cleaning it, right? So you'll always be sideways. The easiest way to do it, if you're sideways, you can actually clean the back. Right? Make sure that it's clean real good and thoroughly. You'll actually dip the rag again. You want to go left hand, right? So he'll take this bucket and he'll sit it on the table. So his left hand can get in it and he'll stay sideways. So he'll take his hand and he'll go under the bag, he'll go under the bag and he'll clean his buttocks area. You know, clean it real good. And this is how you determine there. When you come out, you'll look at the rag, not in your face, but you look at it and you put it back down and you clean it out and you keep washing it. But this, this is the trick. Hold on, hold on, dog. Sometimes, depending on the person, if a person is obese, if a person is like 200, 300 pounds, they defecate a lot. So when you're doing it like that, you want to take the rag, clean it, see feces, throw it away. So you don't take the, the fecal matter, put it back into pure water. So every time you're cleaning, you look at the rag. If there's nothing on the rag, then you, they gonna go ahead and put him down gently. Put him down gently. Yeah. Put him down gently. You'll uncross his legs. Now you take the bucket. You'll open his legs back up. You'll place the bucket right back in between. It will complete the right side is the right back. So we just can't do the right front and the left. No, the right front, then the right back completes it. Then what happens is, Daoud's gonna put the bucket back in the middle. Y'all brothers, y'all will stay at the top of the head. That's how I do it. Being as though I never want nobody to be in congested or running into each other. So now the same way you wash his right side, you will wash his left side the same way. Right. So we're gonna go right back over here. You're gonna go right hand, dip into the water. You'll start from his left side of his neck. And you'll clean his neck, his shoulder, his arm, his forearm and bicep. So you want to grab it with the left, pick his hand up, got to get underneath. You want to hit the bicep and the tricep. Make sure it's all clean and wet. You hit his forearm. Then you go to his wrist. Then what he does is he takes his hand and drop it before he uses his right hand to clean his whole hand in between his fingers his wrist and his palm. Now, if he happened to be a homicide, nine times out of 10, he's gonna have ink on him from the medical examiner. He had a fingerprint. He'll have it on his, his hands and his feet. So sometimes you have to use a different type of chemical to get it off. So after that's done, what you do, what the brother gonna do, you're gonna hold his hand up and you're gonna clean his chest and his underarm. You're gonna clean that whole area with the right hand. Make sure that it's clean real, real good and thoroughly. Right. So, now you'll take and dip the rag again with your left hand. Grab a lot of suds. Every time you go in the bucket, you always want to grab the most suds possible because it covers more of the body. It's easier that way. You're going to use the left hand. You're going to go from his hip all the way down his knee, right back under the back again. Right back under the back here. You're going to put his arm down gently. Dow, you're going to come over here. You're going to dip the rag again. And you will clean from his knee all the way down to his feet, in between each toe, the sole of his feet, and behind his ankles. Right hand. Yeah, right hand. Yeah. Yeah. So I get his legs and he 
everything, right? We get his calf and everything. If you can't pick it up, we get to buy his calf and everything. Make sure that his leg is home. Sometimes you put him on the side, you can hit from there. Back, buttocks, back of his leg. All right. Perfect. Down, you'll put the, the rag back in. You're going to take the bucket and you're going to stand at the top of his head. Brothers, y'all going to do the same thing that you did last time. You're going to take his leg, fold it over. All is different. When you fold his leg over, you know instead of your left hand being on his ankle, be your right hand. Fold it over. Cross it. Over this one. Over this one. Right hand on his ankle, left hand on his knee. Both hands across. Abdullah Tif, you're going to take your right hand, lock his wrist, left hand on his shoulder. Y'all gonna make sure that I step into the table and you actually tilt his body all the way over to the side. The back still covered in outer. Your right hand down, you'll look the same way. You'll be this way, right? This way. Face this way. Now put the bucket right here. And this is the most easiest way for you to get to his back to look at his back, but when you get to his private parts, you just look away. So you'll clean his whole back. You'll clean his whole back. Make sure that his back is clean, thoroughly clean. Then you dip the rag and you'll clean his buttocks area. You'll go right under left hand, uh, face this way. Yeah. Just go right under like that. And just look away. Look to where I'm at and it's clean. Just, just like that. All the way down, all the way under the bag. Just like that, you'll clean, you'll dip the rag again, clean it, same thing, you'll you know, make an assessment if it's dirty, if it's clean, or whatever, how many times you have to clean. You dip the rag again, clean it off, and you can clean the back of his leg, just in case you have anything on it that drips out, you can clean the back of his leg, and you're generally just put him down. You're generally just put him down, now you put the, the, back, the rag back inside, and you put his body back to the same position that you started from. Now, it's a little bit different how different people actually rinse the body off. They rinse the body off. So, what I like to use is this dish right here. I get like a screwdriver and I dig in and make the holes bigger. I fill it all the way up to the top and you rinse him off. So, Dow, you won't come around this way. You'll take your left hand, go under his chin, forefinger across his mouth and nose, and you will actually pour the water on his face and clean it. You'll clean it real thorough. Make sure no water goes in his mouth and his nose at all times. All right? Got to slide that. you move the hand. You take the water, you'll actually rinse him off from his neck. You rinse him off. Same way you watch, you're gonna go the same order. You go straight down, all the way down. You'll use your left hand, grab his wrist, pick it up, hit his hand, hit his forearm, pick his arm up, hit his underarm, hit his chest. This is why I like using this, because it works like a shower hand. Right? So, Abdul Latif, you're going to come around here, you're going to hold his arm up right here. Right? So, so now what you're going to do is, this is the E, this is easy right here. This right here, being it has a, um, a, a nostril on it, you would take this and put it under there, and all you have to do is tilt it. Let the container do its job. That's all you have to do. So, right hand, you're going under there, Dao. You're going to put it under there, tilt it, tilt it all the way up, just like that. Tilt it. And take this and go all the way down the bag. All the way down. Rinse him off real good. Hit his feet. Everything just like that. And what we do is, we actually place his arm back down gently. The brothers, y'all going to take your same positions. Because this is how you clean the front of his body with the water. You have to do his back. So you're going to take your same position that way. Yeah. So while they're doing that, sometimes you will go ahead and fill a bucket back up. I like to have a bucket on the side if I can just keep refilling it up. 
And he'll do it the same way. He'll wrench his back off the same way. He'll use the tip of the bucket because the bag comes past his buttocks area. So he'll just clean it and go all the way down, hit his legs all the way down. This is holding up, just like that. You're going to turn him over gently. Turn him over gently. Turn him over gently. You will open his legs back up. So promise y'all will stand at the top of the head again. Y'all you want to swing around. And you always want somebody to be the leader inside the washroom. One person wash. You don't need a thousand people going back and forth. So long as they out his way, it makes him feel more comfortable in him doing the job. All right? So now you will come back around there, and you're going to rinse him off again. You're going to start. Yeah, right there. Arm, just like that. Yeah, open his hand up. Yeah. Brother, grab his wrist. Yeah. Hit his back arm, underarm, chest. Just like that. You'll go under there with the with the, uh, the flower pot. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Right. Take that water to fly by, whatever it's called. Listen. So you're going to tilt it sideways, just like that. And you're going to go all the way down. And when it has water in it, it really comes out. It comes out like a shower head. So you don't have to worry about trying to go too far. If you go too far, it has a hole in it, and you might empty it out the bucket fast. So we in no rush. You're going to put his arm down gently. you go all the way down, hit his feet, same way. And sometimes when you water in his feet, you can actually take your finger, you go in between his toes in case you got any toe jam or whatever, make sure that you know it's all cleaned out. <clears throat> After that, your brothers are gonna take your same positions. The reason I say that being is though when we're doing the washing, if he started off on that side of the washing with the head, he should end like that. Because when you start rotating and get confused, he wanna get this side. So everybody will take the same positions. And he will water his whole back, his left side. He clean his whole back, make sure all the water off. He will lift it up, he will put the nozzle close to him, tilt it, and it was gonna do his job. It's gonna clean him off thoroughly, thoroughly, but if he left. Go right down his leg, make sure there's nothing on his leg at all. Under the left. You're gonna turn him over, put him down gently, and this is the first wash. He has to be washed a second time the same way. It's two washings. So after this, the second washing is similar to the, the first washing. You could do it with sidra or you could do it with straight water. Again, you could do it with sidra or you could do it with straight water. All right. So we're going to actually do the washing all over again, brothers. Huh? Because this right here, this is time for people to ponder on what's happening. This is going to be real. No, you won't actually rinse him off. We're actually going to use a bucket with a rag again. And it's the actually washing of the body again. No, no. Yeah. Actually, we have to wash him again. Make sure he's thoroughly clean. Yep. The same thing you use. You'll go from his neck. And the reason why I want to do this the second time for the actually sink in what is being done, any steps y'all missed you know, from the first washing, y'all actually can see and visualize because the brother's actually going to step to the side for you to actually see what is going on. So, my said, yeah. I'm going to hold his arm. You want to clean his hand? If a person was standing here, would actually pick his arm up, or go from his forearm to his tricep, to his underarm, to his chest. He'll switch hands, left hand, get, put, put the bucket between his legs down. The most easy and safe way, you put the bucket between his legs, you always have access to the bucket. You'll go left hand. When you go left hand, you'll go under the bag, and he's gonna clean from his hip all the way down to his knee. All the way down to his knee. <clears throat> so
So he's going to switch to his right hand, and he's going to clean from his knee all the way down in between his toes, the sole of his feet, and behind his ankles. Let him all the way down. Let him do that. Yep. Sometimes it's not really hot in here because of the, you know, the air. Sometimes hot because reality starts setting in. Because you being a you being a morgue, you just start sweating. Sometimes the air AC might be on. It's just the thing that you're thinking about it and it's playing inside your head. And these don't help neither. So what we're going to do now, we actually going to turn him over again. Because after the, his right side is complete, we have to turn him over to clean his back. Make sure that after you clean the right side of the front, you clean the right side of his back. So a lot of times people don't do that. And so you want to make sure that he's clean. You'll turn him over gently. And you'll do the exact same thing. Right hand for the back. You can actually look at the back while you clean it. Your left hand will go under where his buttocks at. You will turn away and face a wall. You see the brothers that's also up here, they will actually turn that way. Or turn this way. Be this way. Just in case it becomes exposed, they, not, they, can't, they won't be, you know what I mean, subjected to see it. Yeah. You clean like the back of his leg. Rip this against case, the back of his leg. And just clean this putting down gently. We're putting down jelly again, putting him back in the same position that we started. Now, I just want to stop here for a moment. Usually when you're doing the washing, it's on a steel or aluminum table, and it has to be like, like a 90 degree angle. And the reason being, after you put the, the water on, it has to run off. It would never be on the, like this for the water to be still, and you sit in fecal matter or blood, whatever. It comes at a 90 degree angle, it has a hole at the bottom. So every time you wash them, it's just running off into the bucket. The people have to monitor the bucket because it can't overflow from the blood, whatever it has, you can staff and mercy. So you always want to be extra, extra careful. After he did that, he's going to go back over. Now we're going to take the bucket and you want to start his left side. The brothers, y'all going to stand to the side of Inshallah for the, for the people in the back, sisters in the back of XC, see what's going on. So you'll actually take it You'll dip it, the same thing, right hand, and you start in his neck area. And you'll we'll do his shoulder. Then his bicep. Then his forearm. Then the top of his hand and his fingers. Right. I'm gonna hold this right here. Okay, let's see. So you go always grab the wrist, pull the wrist out so you get to the forearm, the tricep. The underarm, the side of the rib in his chest. Then Dalvin will actually put his hand back in the bucket. He'll dip it again using his left hand. He'll go back under the bag and then clean from his hip to his knee. And remember, this is not a, like a marathon, right? you know what I'm saying? This is not like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like more of a, a not a sprint, a sprint is fast, a marathon is long. It's like a marathon, this is like a real long process. It's a real long, it's about an hour long. About an hour long. So, we we'll actually put his arm down gently. Now you clean his, you gonna clean his knee, his feet in between his toes, sole of his feet behind his ankle. And normally during the washing, there's no talking. Everybody's silent. This is this is this dead silence in the, in the washroom. And if you happen to see anybody talking inside the washroom, you just instruct them that this ain't the same time for it. No, no, then your conversation about what happened, and this is just not the time. Because sometimes they just be, you know, be humbly excused from the washroom. This is serious. What we're going to do now, the brothers is actually going to step in and they're going to turn him over. Turn him over. And it's the same thing. Hold on, step to the side right now. So when you turn him over, make sure it's all the way over. The bag is always covering his privates. Dawa's gonna step up, he's gonna clean his back with his right hand. 
the brothers, y'all gonna look this way. I forgot to tell you in the beginning, but it's always good to look away because sometimes, depending on the condition, how big the brother is, you know what I mean, some stuff can come out and you don't want to be subjected to see that. So just look away. You'll take your switch now, left hand, uh, and just go just like that, straight down. Clean the same under there. Keep the bag down at all times. Make sure that the bag is down. Even if a brother has to stand up here and look away to hold the bag down, you want to make sure that you secure your brother's outlaw at all times. And you will actually go ahead and put him down gently. You put him down gently. Put him down gently. And you'll actually just take this right here, whatever's here, you'll sit there, and you'll dump it out in the sink, and you'll actually fill the container back up. This is the container right here. You'll fill it back up, and now you're going to come back over here, and you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to rinse him off. So I just didn't want to come here and do no speed, speed thing. I want to tell you, this is how a real gymnastic is. It takes patience. It takes patience. The washing, it takes patience. The whistle. <clears throat> you'll actually grab his wrist. You'll pick his wrist back up. You'll hit his forearm. You'll hit his back arm. You'll hit his underarm and his right chest. He'll go under the bag and he'll rinse him off from his hip to his knee. Everything comes in steps. Everything comes in steps. You'll put his arm down gently. He will rinse off from his knee, his leg, his toes, the sole of his feet. I'll rinse it off nice and gently. And sometimes at the funeral home, we do five washings a day. So we've been there for a long time. Sure. So the brothers, y'all actually gonna go on that side and y'all actually gonna turn him over one more time. Huh? So what, what, what number we on? Two. Number two. Make sure you always keep count. You have in mind. Brothers, y'all gonna look that way. Remember I tell you, you have to look away. Make sure this case is out and come out looking here and there just to demonstrate that at all times you even have to look away. All right under right this like that now. Yeah. Your brother's gonna, after he's done, go right down his leg, perfect. You're gonna put him down gently. Put him down gently. Make sure that his body is back in the same position. Just like I mentioned earlier, the table at a 90 degree angle, when soap is on the body, the body tends to slip. So his head might start here at the washing, then his head is here and his feet off the table. So you always have to adjust it. And the good thing about it, when the soap is on the body, you can actually slide him up gently. So what you're gonna do is dial, you're gonna go on that side, brother, y'all gonna stand at the top of the game. The brother that actually doing the washing, you always wanna make sure he has enough space, a sister, you have enough space to do what you need to do without running into anybody. Down the arm again, just like that. Grab his wrist, I will move it out. Go hit his forearm, the hand, forearm, tricep, underarm, and chest. He's going to take the, uh, the nozzle, place it back under the bag, and he's going to rinse him off from his hip all the way down to his knee. All the way down. His knee. You'll go from his knee area all the way down to his feet in between his toes. And you see, watch in between his toe, the sole of his feet and behind his ankles. Then your brother's going to come on this side. And y'all gonna take your same positions and y'all gonna rotate him one more time. One more time. So 
Your brothers ever look that way? I should have told you in the beginning, so we got it by now. I'll you But, slow us down. Now look this way. Make sure that y'all just always look away. Always look away. Yeah. Always look away. And the best trash bags to use is the, um, what's it, construction? Construction trash bags? Because they're big enough to actually cover. So they always go. So after that, we actually going to turn him back over. We're going to turn him back over. So that's the second washing. The third washing consists of camphor. Right here. It's a poison. What people are, today that we use it for, like the people that hunt, they rub it up on them and the animals can't pick up their scent. Animals can't pick up their scent. This is the camphor. Right here. Has a little skeleton with the little um, skeleton with the little bones behind it. Now you know that it's poison, it's toxic. So you make sure you keep this, you don't keep none of this right here. If you happen to have a genetic kit in your house or whatever, make sure you keep this out of the children's roots. Because to them, this is look like candy. So. And what we do with this, we actually crush it. You crush it down, it comes like little blocks. Um, people have the oil, the camphor, the auto, the camphor oil. Um, they have another one, it's like a little cube, when you mix it up real good. It's not like this one. I like this one better because it actually stays on the body. And it's a technique by keeping this on it. This right here, what the Prophet Sallallahu said, it makes the body stiff. Right here. Stiff is the body, keeps the body cool, relaxed in a calm state, and it keeps the bugs off. And this is good right here. So while the person actually inside the cupboard, inside the grave, nothing touches the body. No bugs get on them or nothing. So only for a short period of time after you question, you know, you know um, you know, the stages of the, the body, uh, how it breaks down, happens. So we'll take this, we'll crush it up real good into a powder form. After we crush it up, we'll have this bucket right here. That's why I love this bucket. You want to have two different buckets. These right here, I bought these like four years ago. They had them on sale over here in the wintertime. 99 sellers bought like 10 of them. Just keep buying them and have them because you, this right here, you would you need. The person looked at this, you buying all these, it's the winter. But they don't know this right here, this is a tool for the Muslim. Hmm. So you always want to have them and you always want to write either for the wudu on it or you want to write it, put camphor on it so you know which one to use. Because what the camphor does, it put residue around it. It's always going to put residue around it. So if you're making wudu, doing wudu with a person, you're going to be always applying camphor on top of the person and, and that is not the stage. The wudu is with straight plain water. So you'll take it, you'll fill it up, and the temperature of the water, that's what I should have hit on in the beginning. The temperature of the water, the best type of water to use is cold water. If the water is extremely cold, then you can he like heat it up a little bit, just warm it up a little bit. And the reason being for cold water, it actually controls the blood of the body. If he's, especially a person that is uh, post-mortem, that he has an autopsy. If you put warm water and hot water, it tends to make him bleed run faster, the blood. So we'll actually crush this up into a powder form. We'll place it inside here. We'll place it right inside here with the water and we'll just mix it. You shake it and mix it. Or you put your fingers in it. Uh, you know, some people, they have like a, a stick, like a ruler. They have to come like a little ruler and they just mix it up real good. And you'll do the same thing. Dow, you'll come over here. Brothers, you're gonna stand down at the feet area. In the same way that you rinse the body off, it's the same way you put the camphor on. So what you do is that. You'll take your, your, your left thumb, you'll go under his chin. His four fingers go over his mouth and nose, make sure nothing goes on his face or in his mouth and his nose, and you'll, put, you'll pour this on his body, on his face, his head area. This right here is gonna look like white crystals on it. White crystals is gonna be on it. You're gonna pour it real good. You're gonna hit his hair, his face, his leg, yeah, his neck, right? You're gonna pull the bucket up, then you move your hand, perfect. Then he'll start from his neck area, your water from his neck. You'll go down his arm. And it's the same type of water you use as you was washing him off. And as you're doing this process, you will actually see the white crystals, especially if a person is dark skin, you will actually see the white, it'll actually stand out, like little white specks on it. Though you'll actually see it. So you know, some people like 
uh, might be lights and you really can't see them. Like we do like the, uh, the, the foreign community. Like when they do it, sometimes they can't really see it. But is the care for them? Then you really have to look close and you actually, you know, can see it or you rub your hand on it. So you'll go down his whole arm. You'll do his palm. You'll pick his hand right back up. You'll water his forearm, his tricep, his underarm, and his rib. And you're going to see the care for it is it's automatically going to stick to him. You're going to go right back under Dao. You want to hit his privates. You want to hit from his hip all the way down to his knee. Down to his knee. The same way, just like that. Yep. You're going to go from his knee all the way down his legs, in between his toes, the sole of his feet, and all that. You'll go straight down just like that. And all you have to do, you're just letting it, you're just letting it, the container do its job. The more, let me see this real fast, dog. The more you tilt it over, the more water come out. The less water come out, you always, it's, it's, it's just the flick of the wrist, how you want it with, with the camphor. After that, we're actually going to turn him over one more time. So the brothers are going to be on this side. And it's going to be the same thing. You will turn him over. You will turn him over. The bag will cover him. You will rinse his back off. His neck and his back. Make sure you get all that right there. His back. You'll get under the bag with his buttocks area. You will just adjust your hand, touch your wrist more. Make sure that the camera gets back there. You're actually putting down gently. You're putting down gently. You will open his legs. You will actually place the bucket. You'll go back on that side of the home. You'll fill it back up with water. If it, you know, if it needs to be full of water, you fill it back up with water and camphor. And you'll do the same thing you just did to the right side. You'll do the left with the exception of his face. So you start at his neck. And the only time the one time is on his face because you really don't want no water in his mouth and his nose. They have a machine, it's called an aspirator inside the morgue. It's a, it's a big tool with an arm hook. You have to stick it down his throat, push it down, twist it, and suck all the water and blood and all of They start throwing up. Most of the people who do the washing, they've been doing it for a long time, so they know like what to do and not to do. You hold his wrist, and you'll go right there, right? So you'll hit his, his red, You'll go right under the bag, and you'll hit his hip all the way down to his knee. And all you're doing is tilting this. You always want to make sure that you tilt it to get all the water for the camphor to stick under here in the places that you can't see. You'll go right down to his feet. You can put his arm down gently. So what y'all going to do now, y'all actually going to turn him over. What number are we on? Three. Three. What did he left? So we actually going to turn him over. Brothers, we turn him over. Y'all going to look at the wall. Now we're going to rinse his back. And this goes for sisters too. Y'all do the wash and make sure y'all look away. Always make sure y'all look away. And go all the way under. Just like that. Always make sure you just tip the bucket, inshallah. The nozzle. Okay. It's like that. We actually going to put him down gently. So this right here completes the washing. So after you complete the washing, now it's called steps of drying him off. You get steps of what? what? Preparing the body from the beginning. Sitting him up. Y'all brothers, y'all can stand right down at his feet. We picked him up. We sat him up. We cleaned all the feces and urine out of his body. We cleaned that off. After we cleaned that off, the brother started the wudu. After he started the wudu, he did the first wash. Then with antibacterial soap or siddha, he does the second wash, cleaning the front, right, front, back, doing the, uh, the front, back, from the right side. Left side, left back. He is rinsed off and he's washed the second time. Then the third one is with the kefir. After that's clean right there, his steps need to be taken right now. So, inshallah, I'm about to show y'all how to do this. And this is a technique to this. This is what I use. So, do like tea. 
for the towels. This is how I use the towels. I always use the towels to my advantage to try to get most out of it. And I'm always, you know what I mean? I'm always like, I'm real anal about making sure that his privacy is covered at all times. Right? So I take the towel like this, right? Regular towel. Sometimes you get the real beach towels. So the beach towels, you take it, it'd be this size. You'll actually place it on top of them just like this. You'll place it on top of them just like this. So the second thing is, after he's covered just like this, you want to make sure that it starts from his chin, that it covers his whole body. Now, it depends on the condition of the body. If I had to sew him up, if he's like an autopsy homicide victim, then I know that he has a wide flat on him, that he's cut open from his shoulder to the center of his chest. And from the center of his chest, it goes right back up to his shoulder. Then it has a thing from his from his um, sternum all the way down probably to like his navel area. He is open, so you have to sew. So it takes like 60 minutes, something like that to sew. If I know I had to prepare the body like that, then I know it's a possibility it might stain through the tiles. But the tiles is all this, is, this, this right here is just to lay on top of them, just to draw the water out. That's all it's doing, laying on top and to draw the water out. The second thing I do is, I take another towel. And then I just do it. A lot of people don't do it, but you know what I'm saying? I like to have my brother secure. When we moving them and all that, I like to be secure. And you know, the ayah uh, always pop up my kirama, keti bin yana murutafalor, the Lord pointed two angels on the right and the left, writing everything down. So I know I'm being recorded. So you know, I can't get away from nothing. So I want to make sure that I'm thoroughly and I'm giving the brother his just rights. I'm always big on that. I don't care how long it takes. We're not rushing or nothing. I make sure the brother is done correctly. So I take this towel and I lay it across his hips. I lay it across his hips. I take his arm, his right arm, and I sit it on top of the towel. I sit it on top of the towel. And I'm going to show you the reason why I do this. Right. Show you the reason why I do this. I come over here to the left side. I do the same thing. I take his arm, pull it out, put it right on top of the towel. After I put it on top of the towel, I make sure at all times that he is secure. He is secured at all times. He's not exposed nowhere. I look. Mm -hmm. It's always good to look the second time, make sure that he's cool. Then what I do is I put my left hand on his chest. Where that mic rest my face right here. I put my right, my left hand on his chest, and what I'll do is my right hand, I'll take it and I'll grab the bag and I'll pull the bag out. I'm gonna show you. Take the bag. After I take the bag out, I would take this bag and I would discard it. In every funeral home, they should have a hazard trash can. You can't just place this in a regular trash can because it has DNA and all type of stuff on it. Like I said, everybody get treated as phase five. Everybody treated like they got HIV. Or you know, they have some type of illness like that. And that's how when, when, uh, we went to school, they teach you like everybody has to be treated like this. Regardless of how close you know the person, everybody has to be treated as such. Take your hand, you put it on top. You make sure right now that he's covered. So you know that from navel to knees is covered and from across that he's covered. So we want to ask Brother Abdul Latif. He would generally start from the right side. He will use both his hands to pat to body all the way till you get to the left side. You actually pat him. And the reason why you pat him, because you, all you're using is the towel to touch the water, but it keeps the camphor on the body. If you took the top and wipe it away, they take the camera off. So that's why when you do, you crush it to a fine dust and it stays on the body. The brother's gonna go right behind him and you're gonna sit there and pat his arms. You'll pat his arms, you'll pat his feet. All right? So you understand, you done, right now you don't cover the whole body. The whole body done except what? His head. So the head area is, you have to be very, 
very careful. Being as though if he's an autopsy victim of homicide or foul play, they actually have to cut into his head. All his organs for, from a homicide victim, they take his tongue out, they take his heart out, they take his kidneys, his liver, and they place it inside a red bag, and it's inside his stomach. He has nothing inside of him. So what we will have to do, we'll take his head off, we'll stuff his head with newspaper to keep his skull in, intact. Then I will have to sew over his skull to make sure his skull is in, intact. He has two flaps that's actually inside his head, next to the cranium. The, uh, the, it's like, they use like fishing string. It has like a, a nice wax film to it, so it goes through, and the needle is made out of like a, um, a scalp. So you know, I'll show you a scalp. So this, like, this ain't nothing to play with. So you really have to be experienced even dealing with it, because you could poke yourself, and, you know what I mean? Blood around, you know, you might you know, contract disease or something. So there's always a possibility working in a funeral home or doing this, you can always, you know, check this email, Allah keep that away from us, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's very dangerous back there. So what would happen is, if he happened to have stitches in the back of his head, if I had to sew him up or anything, I would know that I would have to gently pat his face. And usually the times, if it ain't somebody that I know, they know how to do it. Like there's two brothers that, that, that come to do it, um, Abdul Rahim, uh, Benny Adam and uh, Brother Jack. And uh, when they actually come to do it, I, I just sit back and I just observe and watch how they do it. You know what I'm saying? And we just sit there, you know what I mean, as brothers, you know, learn from each other and sit back because they're more experienced than me. And I took a lot of notes about watching them and just, you know, reading stuff. So I'm going to let. But if somebody is less experienced, then it's always I'll just step up and show them, and let, I'll just do the, the face. Being as though that a person would think I could just wipe his face like you wipe your own face, and what you do is you put tears into the skin. Now you didn't harm the body. So breaking bones, you know, it's a penalty for that. So you, you really have to be very, very careful dealing with a person that is deceased. So what I do is I would just gently pat his face gently, and I would just clean off all the residue. Now, let's just say if this is a hospice, person with hospice, and they had like a tube in his mouth, and they had like a breathing machine, or he might got the trach in his neck. It's different steps that you have to do. I would have to pull the trach out, I would have to sew his neck. If he has the tape around him because he had the face mask, I would have to take, a, it's a special chemical that I would have to place on a rag, and I would have to gently just wipe away all the sticky film from the tape that is left the residue off. But I don't, I don't suggest nobody else to do it because they'll do it too hard. You know, they'll start leaving like pink marks and stuff like that. So I usually try to, you know, cater to the face and make sure that he's done it all times, inshallah. So at that, after I get done patting his face, make sure there's no water, everything's cool. Now it's time for the brothers to actually turn him again. So I'm going to leave Brother Dao out of there. And I'm actually going to show y'all how it's done in show one. This is very, very important. I'm going to get my in show one. So y'all three brothers, y'all going to get on that side. Let me see the top. Do I hold the phone? It's my Facebook cool right now. I'm just going to have So the technique is this right here. So say this is a towel, you only have one towel left, right? Sometimes you have more towels. But sometimes you're going to use sometimes less is more, if that makes sense. You have 99 towels. So you have a towel, you can always use this one. This is your left hand. Your left hand will hit the table, right hand, hit the back. Got it? Now this, this towel right here that I use right here, I'm not worried about his box area because when he goes over, it covers. As soon as this touch, it's going to absorb all the water and it's leaving the can for you. That's my technique. So, I'm going to let Everybody else is going to use that. So, young brother is actually going to turn him over. Now, turn him over. Make sure that y'all step in. Turn him all the way over. This actually covers him. You'll take the left hand, just like this. The left hand will be on the table. It's a metal table. Now, you have to keep in mind... 
that being as though after you dry his back, you can't adjust it no more. You know how like the water, if you slide down, you can slide it back up. So you really try to keep him in the same position. So you'll take your left hand, clean the table, right hand, clean the back, just like that. Then we say, Johnny, put him down. Put him down just like that. After he's put down like that, then we sit there and I will have to go to the left side. I will have to go to the left side. It's the same thing. We're going to turn his body over one more time. And you always take the precaution of make sure that his outer rug is covered. Hold on, hold on, brothers. Make sure when he has a towel covering, you always want to double check. Before you move, you want to make sure that he's covered at all times. Then you want to turn it. It'll turn sideways. This will cover him. Same thing. Left hand table, right hand back. Table, always looking away. I can pack, cleaning. All the way down, make sure the water on the table. Put him down, put him down gently, hold the towel. Put him down just like that. That's the steps that we take. Make sure at all times that a brother, his honor is preserved, just like in his, in his living and his death. Now, after we do that, there's a, there's a stage. Y'all brothers can stand over there real quick, because this is a stage I'm gonna explain about the shrouding. This is the shrouding process. But each person is different, depending on his weight, depending on his size, depending on his condition. Now, um, I've been doing it going on five years with Hamdi Left. Five years. I, 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 I don't even count. I don't even count. You know what I'm saying? I just look for the ajah. I just look for the reward from Allah. But. Uh, at the end of the year, we always wrap up how many, you know, genazes we did, how many regular friends we did, and the number be outstanding. So there's different, uh, different conditions of the body that you always have to take into consideration. And another thing we have in our community, a lot of people is obese. And what happens is, the same way how you just washed him right here is not going to be that easy. And it's not going to be that easy to shroud him. Because if a person weighs from 400 to 500 pounds and you have four people, it's really going to be difficult. And for the sisters, it's even, even more difficult. Because they have to learn, and this is the reason why that I asked uh, one of the sisters that I work with, uh, she's not stationed in Philly no more, and I, I talked to her. And uh, inshallah, she should be uh, trying to put something together here. You know, we talked to the, um, the, um, the imams and uh, Brother uh, Naeem. We're going to try to get her here. And she's like, she's like a female version of me, if that makes sense. Like, like me and her can sit there and talk and know exactly what to do. And I remember when she first came and I gave her pointers, you know, through a, like a curtain, how to go about it. And now, alhamdulillah, Allah aided her. So now she's trying to be a funeral director. You know what I mean? Allah ain't going to be preserving sister named Saul. Um, so it, there's different instances. So we have in the morgue, in our morgue, we have what is it? It's called a hydraulic jack. Meaning that if you, you kind of obese, you know, we can get you and we can pick you up. Every funeral home is not equipped with it. And what it does is it makes a hardship on the people. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, so say, say we had a brother uh, he was like 600 pounds. Nobody showed up for the wash. Not because they didn't love him, because they didn't want to be burdened with the task. And that's what happens. Not every Muslim that dies had people come out to wash. I'm going to make that very clear. I want to make that very, very clear. People that die, Muslim women and Muslim children and Muslim men, Everybody that passes away does not have a team that comes there and says, guess what, we're going to take this, uh, we're going to take on this burden. They're going to do it. They're going to say, all that. Y'all got it. Y'all watch. Okay, I'm doing that. I'll come back. And that's, and, and, and that's, you know, and how they look at it, they look at it, especially for the, the reason why I'm saying this, because they do this a lot when people is obese. They don't want to wash. One thing is that urine going to keep coming out. 
Feces is going to keep coming out. He's going to keep throwing up. He's going to stay being aspirated. One of the brothers that I work with, Abdullah, Hafidullah, very good brother, man. He's one of the persons that specialized in dealing with brothers that is obese. He works with me. I'm talking about he's a monster. Like he, he, you know, he specialized and he taught me some techniques of how to deal with a brother in them certain situations. But sometimes when you're faced with a situation like that and you're not prepared and you don't have knowledge, hands-on knowledge, it's like it really discourages people. So they really don't want to come. So after he is covered properly, he's dried off. The next step that we do, right? That's what we do. We don't use the auto, the oil. Yep, the oil. The oil is next. Whatever type of fragrance. Usually the people who does the, does the washing or come, the family member, he might have like a favorite scent and they really want that on. Not that he you know I me mean, anything for sure or nothing. It's that I remember him in that. You know what I mean? Like that brother, it, it brings back good memories. So we're, we're going to get brother Abdul Latif to actually do the oil and we put the atal on. He will actually open it up, and open it up, you know what I mean? Because that, that'll get all over. I think the brother got enough oil on today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the first lamp in two hours. So what we want to do is he's going to take the oil, place it on his two right fingers, and he's going he gonna to oil his forehead down to his nose. Forehead down to his nose. That's one. It's not two, like the forehead and nose, it's the same thing. One. Then he's going to move down to his right hand. He's going to oil the whole inside of his palm. So he would actually pick the palm up. He would actually oil the whole palm properly. Alhamdulillah. He's going to put his hand down gently. And we will go down to his right knee. Now, dealing with his right knee, you see the towel on it? So the brother, Abdul Latif, will put the oil on his two fingers and go under the towel. You never take the towel and expose his knee. That's still his province. So you go under the towel, right hand. No, just go right under. You go right under, just like that. Because you go right under the towel. Then you will do the top of his feet and the sole of his feet. The top of his feet. And the sole of his feet. Then he'll move on to his left side. And he'll do his left palm. And the places that he's oiling is the seven places of prostration. The forehead is one, the two palms, the two knees, and the feet. So these are the places being oiled. You go under the towel, you hit his knee. Make sure that you keep the towel down at all times. Then we'll do the top of his feet and the sole of his feet. Now, after this, this is the things that you can do. Shake files and also brings that you can do the armpits. You can do the armpits behind the knees. Some brothers, they like putting the oil on his beard. They, they oil his beard up. So, alhamdulillah. So after he is oiled, he's oiled properly. So now I'm going to demonstrate to y'all how do you set the shroud up? How do you set the shroud up? Right. So this is where this coming to play. So it's going to be more action than talking because I'm just going to show you something. All right, for the Muslim man, there's three bands, three ties is on him. One on his feet, one is on his abdominal section, his stomach, and one that's on his head. The woman is a little bit different. They have five ties. The brothers only have three. So the ties look like this. And what I do is I just take it off from the shroud. And you know, special things. So we want to clear this table off real good. Let's move everything off this table so everybody can be in tune of watching what is going to happen on this table right here for y'all can have a visual. So you'll actually take it off the shroud, you'll get scissors and just rip it off. 
You'll take the first um, tie and you'll lay it across like this. Just lay right across. Right? This is the first tie. So my beloved brother Naeem, I know you're trying to escape, brother. You have to come back over here now. <laughs> Nah. You're going to hold this right here, brother. This is what the shrouds look like. There's no designer labels on these. It's plain white. And they've already been made for you. That's the sad part. they already been made for you. They're pre-cut everything. Just waiting for somebody to die to be shrouded in them. It's serious. Every day I walk in a job, I open up the closet, I see the shroud is giving me chills, and I close it back. So what you do is you open up the shroud and you lay it down just like you're making a bed. You make sure that it's lined up in the middle. You don't want to have it too far over, that it overlaps. You want to have it right exactly in the middle. And I think it's about right, I'm really not. I always double check. I'm just like that. Like I got, I got to make sure everything is done properly. Because I believe if you do it correct the first time, you don't have to do it the second time. And we have to be wasting people's time. Or <clears throat> making sure. Now I just want to stop here on the first round, being as though this. If he is a, a postmortem, if he has been autopsy, then there has to be other precautions that we take. Meaning that there has to be plastic laid at the top of his head. Being as though that his skull is open and it only been closed with stitches. So he's still bleeding. If we actually was to place him in that condition upon this, the blood would seep through this. The blood would seep through it. And I done, I done saw that at the graveyard, people that did not take the time out to actually shroud the brother right. Then when they take him out, the bear, the box, the family goes on tilt automatically because they see their loved one bleeding. The brothers in the grave that's retrieving the body don't want to touch him because it's blood. So we have to take these steps like seriously, this this is some like this is a serious thing, right? It's serious business. Laughing and joking, we can play later. This is serious right now because what you're doing is you're putting your brother or your sister in a home. The gray will be her home until the day of judgment. That will be her home. That will be her home. So we understand that you have to send her, give her the brother or sister their rights. You just don't want to rush it. If you don't know what you're doing, you have to go to the people who do. Inshallah. Young, you cool? Alhamdulillah. It'll be all right. So that is the first shroud. This is the first shroud. So we're going to do the second shroud. It's the same exact way. But what I do is I pull the shroud down a little bit more to his feet. To his feet. All right. Brother kind of parched him. <laughs> you all right? Really. You okay? He's crying earlier. Oh. He won't be okay to get right. <clears throat> Time to reflect. Shake, listen. Still in practice. Then the third sheet is placed like the same way as the second. So we have three sheets. For the sisters, y'all have five. For the brothers, they have three. 
For the sisters, they have a breast band and they have a key mark that's added to it. Um, I wish the sister was here to explain that more to y'all, but you know, hopefully, inshallah, in the future, we're gonna get her. But you know, she's like, like she's exceptional. Like, this, this is like she, she's, she's a real detailed sister. So hopefully, we're gonna try to get her. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the this is the third sheet. <laughs> after the three sheets, after the three sheets is actually placed down. They're never placed down on the table neither. They're placed down in a box. It's a wooden box, pine box, has no fancy, nothing on it. It's a regular box. They actually placed on top of it. And the reason how I do it like this, so when the body actually goes down in it, it goes down in a soft manner, it has a pillow in the box. The pillow is not to make the person, the brother, sister comfortable. What it is to keep his head up in a 90 degree level, even though he don't start throwing up and no blood stuff coming out the mouth and the nose, because you keep it at this level, you know what I'm saying? They can actually, you know, start, you know, hemorrhaging or, you know what I mean, aspirating and they start throwing up. So what we do is we'll put the pillow in the boxes to keep his head tilted. So, and it's a special way how you pick the brother up, but we have to put the brother in a special thing. So the, the next thing we do after that, we have to put the brother in this plastic bag. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, see if you're gonna go on that side. Brother Naini won't come this way. And the reason being, I put this in here, it's to, it, it's to really safeguard the brother just in case anything happens to leak out. You never want to go ahead and do it and miss something that you have to go back and take the brother out the shrouds. So you want to do it the first time thoroughly. So we have a bag right here already at the bottom. It's already two pre-cut holes. So his right foot goes in first. His right foot goes in first. This is his right foot right here. It goes in all the way to the ankle. Abdul Latif is gonna put the next, put the next foot in. The left foot. Now hold it a second. Hold it right up. We're gonna do is we're gonna pick his ankle up. We're gonna slide the bag all the way down to his knee. Yeah. We're gonna start over, inshallah. The hole will go over his left foot all the way to his ankle, and we'll pick his ankle up and pull it back all the way up to his knee. We'll cover it to his knee. You might gotta adjust the towels a little bit. Pick his leg up, all the way up to his knee, perfect. What I do is I take the, the, the second towel that I place across his hip, I take that away from him, I take it off him. Now what happens is his aura is not exposed. Being the only use this, so when he turns over, so his buttocks don't come out. So we're gonna take this towel off. This will be taken off. Usually it goes inside the washing machine. <coughs> we'll actually go ahead and lift his leg up a little bit more and slide it all the way up just like that. We're gonna put his leg down. Brothers, y'all gonna go on this side. Y'all gonna tilt him over. We're gonna take the plastic bag and we're gonna pull it past his buttocks area. Right? Just like that. So you ain't gonna touch his waist, you're gonna just go from his hips. We're gonna tilt him sideways, one, two, three. Right there, put it up, put it down. His right hand will actually go inside the bag. Go inside the bag, alhamdulillah. Then, Abdul Latif, you know you're on that side. Hold this right here, you gonna stay over there. I'm gonna pull him over, and he gonna pull the bag past his buttocks from the left side. All you're worrying about is the bag. Turn him over. His left hand will go inside the bag. We'll pull it up to his chin. We'll pull the towel out and discard it. This will actually come up. So Islamically, he is covered properly. So you open up, Abdul Latif, just step to the side. He's covered properly from his navel to his knees. He is properly covered, just like that. 
Now, any mishaps happen, any urine come out, a feces come out, we have controlled it. If it happens to come out, it will only stay inside here. It will only stay inside here. Another thing you can do, you can pack it with cotton. If you have cotton, you can pack it with cotton. Um, so now, we're going to actually demonstrate how you pick the body up and place the body down. So we're going to do it. So the brothers, y'all going to come on this side. Abdul Latif, you're going to be at the head. You're going to be at the waist, and you're going to be at the feet. So, Naeem, you're going to hold this microphone. You're around that side. So, you're look at it from this way, this angle. So, what you're going to do is, Abdul Latif, you're going to take your right hand, you're going to cradle his head all the way under, all the way under. Just like that. I'm going to tilt him sideways. Y'all going to go under and scoop him up like a baby. Got it? I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Put your hands all the way under. Scoop him up. I'm going to pick him up. And you're going to walk him all the way to the table. Just like that. You're going to walk him all the way to the table. And you're going to place him down. Place him down gently. Make sure that everything is done properly. Place him down gently. Make sure you always give him a, a, a good look over. Make sure everything is done properly. How he is. See how he is more over this corner. So you want to just adjust him a little bit. Right there. Always want to adjust him. Make sure that he's in the middle of the shroud. So be able to be shroud correct. So, so what you're going to do is, hold this microphone on you. Yeah. So, brothers, right hand, this is how we're going to do this right here. It's easy. You'll go right hand, left hand, like this. Now, if it was in a box, the box is a little bit higher because it has a, has a truck under it to actually roll the body from here to there. Get it from point A to point B. At that time, you have to use right hand, left hand to actually pull the shroud down. If you do not do that, when a person is trying to shroud, this is going to be loose and it's going to keep unraveling and getting stuck under him. So that's not like the best way, the best technique. I try to do things very ABC. Something when you look at it, say, oh, I know how to do it, is a very, is in detail. So y'all brother's going to come around this way. You're going to do right hand, left hand, hold the sheet down. Right here, left hand, do la teeth. So you gotta say face it. So let's just say if this was the surrear, this was the, the casket that his body would be carried on, it'll be a little bit higher. We'll hold the sheets down. So what we do is we'll shroud from this side. So this. We'll make sure that we come down from his feet, put his feet actually together, take the shroud and bring it over. Make sure that his feet is together. Tuck under. No, y'all got that side. Y'all only gonna worry about y'all side. I'm gonna do this side from over here. Come this way now. So you'll take the sheet, and the best thing to do is you bunch up on the sheet, try to make it tight as possible. So when you go across the body, you go under and you tuck. You actually tuck it all the way under to make sure that it's nice and tight. Now. After you make sure that it's nice and tight, you always want to look over again and make sure that you have did everything properly. Now, this will have to go over the face. So go over the face. Me and Brother Naeem, we're going to hold this side down. Y'all going to separate the first sheet. So it's three sheets. We're going to separate the first sheet. Y'all going to tuck him like you'll tuck a baby in a bed. Yeah. All the way under, and tuck it all the way under. Just like that. Y'all gonna hold it down again, the two sheets. I did. Yeah, it's them already. Yeah. Hold that. We're gonna do the same exact thing. We'll take the sheets. And we'll tuck him again. I always try to make sure that the feet is secure. They're together because it's easier when you tie it at the end.
I try to make everything easy. I'm trying to make nothing hard for the people. So I make sure that the feet is cool. I grab the sheet, I inch up on it, and I go right across. You see how tight the sheet is right there? I go right under it. And I keep. I go up top, and I make sure that my fingers can actually tuck the sheet in as tight as possible. And that I try to keep as most of the wrinkles out. So I know that it's tight. And y'all actually do it. Separate the second sheet. Me and I ain't gonna hold this side down, and y'all gonna try to go tight. See right here? See, it's too loose. You want it tight and it right there. Go under. And the reason when you tighten it, make sure that you tighten it properly. Something keep it The next step is um, All right. The next step is uh, sh shrouding the third shroud, inshallah. Hold this now. We're going to start back at the feet. And we're gonna take the uh, the shroud and actually do the same thing we did for the, the for two of them. We're gonna make them tight as possible, and we're just gonna make sure that we tuck them like we tuck a baby. Make sure that there's no lines. We're gonna make sure that there's no lines. To show up. So we're gonna take the, the third shroud and we're gonna shroud over and make sure that it's tough. Is this head out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the most scariest thing that that is affecting me right now. I just saw many so many love brothers I love, man, that I had to pull, I could just pull the sheet off of the CM there. May Allah keep that away from my man. What we do next is we take the, the um The next thing we do, we take the, the, the bows, the um I forgot the name of it. The ties. I apologize. I just gotta get myself together and show why. Hold this right now. We're gonna take the ties and we're gonna tie the ties at his ad abdominal section, his stomach. I like to put the ties on his left side. And reason being why he's in the qabr, why he's in the grave, he's on his right side facing the direction of the Qibla. Um, the direction of the living is the dead, and the dead is the Qibla, facing the direction of the Qibla. So I put the ties on the left side. And you tie it like you tie your shoe. Pass me the other ties. And it's the exact same thing. Go under his ankles, and you put it on his right, I mean his left side. Make sure that it's tight, that he can't move, that he can't get loose or nothing, because he has to come out of the box. And this is the reason being, you don't want him to come out the box, then the shrouds start to unravel. He could be exposed. So um, the next thing will be his head. His head will be covered. So this will actually be placed over him, then it'll be tucked over his face. And this right here will go around his neck. It will go around his neck as a tie. 
So when he's actually in the grave, he'll be on his right side facing the Kibler. The left bows will be right in front of you. So the three brothers is actually inside the grave. They have easy access just to pull the bow out. Not taking the whole band off, just pulling the bow out. So um, that's about it. That's like basically about the, uh, the washing. Um, we still didn't go over to Janazan. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do, we're gonna pray Salat al Asr. Then we're gonna go over the actual prayer, the dua and the etiquettes of the graveyard and you know so forth and so on. For y'all, when y'all do actually experience a janazi, you know what's from right and wrong, so you know how to exactly how to you know uh, assess the situation. Exactly. Okay.